Hey everybody, Natalie Barton here. Welcome back to the channel. Woo! Well, I got one video posted today, but it wasn't this video. So today we're gonna do this video. <laughs> this is the one I've been promising you. So two weeks ago, I was temping in an office, which actually I will be at again this week, and I'm kind of nervous. Uh, cause I was also there last week and the same thing happened. Holy moly. But we're going to talk about my bloodiest day in dental hygiene and really my worst day thus far. So first off, nobody died. <laughs> Thankfully nobody actually died. Um, cause that truly would be the worst day ever. Um, the reason I got into dental hygiene and not nursing was because I didn't want people dying on me. Um, I didn't want that responsibility. So Nobody died, for starters. However, there was so much blood. But let's start at the beginning. So I woke up that morning and my sh temping shift didn't start until 10 a.m. And I was like, cool. So I was taking my time, you know, eating breakfast and doing a workout and getting ready. And everything went really well in the morning. And I grabbed my gear and I threw it in the car and I headed to work. And I always give myself extra time because I want to, uh, A, even though I've been to the office before, I want to be there early so I can set up and then go over the schedule and just know what I'm doing for the day. <laughs> so I walk into the office and they're giving me this super weird look. And I was like, hey, how's it going? And I walk into the back and as I'm walking around the way this office is, it's kind of like a U shape. And I'm walking down the hallway and every room has somebody in it. And I just went, that's weird. Like all the rooms have hygienists. So I wonder where I'm supposed to be today because uh, they have Four, four or five hygienists that work in there routinely. It's a big office. And uh, I found the, the hygiene assistant and I went up to her and I said, hey, you know, how's it going? And she's like, are you supposed to be here today? And I went, yeah. Huh, I wonder if so-and-so's leaving. That's odd. And so she goes up front to check and I'm like, that's weird. But they had scheduled me for two days and then canceled one of the days. And I went, okay, well, you know, maybe they meant to cancel me for both days and they just didn't, they forgot or whatever. Uh, so I went up to talk to the office manager and she's like, did I not, what, wait, huh? So she's looking at her schedule and she goes, you're not booked for today. And I was like, yes, I am. She goes, no, you're not. And, yes, I am. So I whip out my phone, pull up my cloud dentistry app and realize I'm at the wrong office. Holy moly. <laughs> so this office I'd been going to the last couple of months fairly regularly and somehow in my head I had gone to that office instead of the one. So I'm looking at the clock and it's about 10 till 10 and it's like the two offices are thankfully fairly close to each other but not close enough. Like I am going to be late, especially if I hit any kind of traffic and if I don't floor it and drive like a Lebanese. So I am like, okay, well I gotta go. I'll see you guys. She's like, I booked you for like two weeks from now. I was like, okay, I'll see you then. And I went running out the door. So now I'm in a panic because that has not happened to me this entire year. I try and be super careful, obviously about where I'm going, what time I need to be there. I double and triple check. And I got lazy and I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. So I'm at the wrong office. I'm flying to the other office. I'm calling them going, hey, I'll be there. It's gonna be 15 after, so sorry. And they're like, yeah, no worries, no worries. You got a new patient. You have two new patients first off and they're not here yet. So, you know, you're fine. And so I just drove like a maniac to get there. And I was only 10 minutes late instead of 15. So yay, glad there were no cops out. And I, so I walk in, I'm like, hey, throw my stuff in the back, get into the room, start setting up, and I'm ready in like five minutes. Like I really, I did a quick setup, I was ready to go. And I set up and they go, well, she's still filling out paperwork. Okay. I waited 30 minutes for this woman to fill out her new patient paperwork. <sighs> well, at least I'm calm, but at the same time, I'm looking at the rest of the day going, Wow, there's a lot going on today. So my day started with two new patients for 90 minutes each. And then uh, I think it was a perio maintenance after that. And then lunch. And then my next patient for two hours after that was a gingival flap with nitrous. And I went, it's a what? Like it's scaling and replaning, right? So this is the deep cleaning, but this is like the deep, 
deep cleaning. And I have never done one of these. And obviously I, as the hygienist, do not flap gums. But I'm now panicking about this because I've never done this procedure. I've never seen this procedure done. I have heard about it. I have seen pictures, but I've never seen it done live. And I am kind of freaking out. So I was like, okay, well, first things first, let's deal with the new, the new patient. So she's finally ready and the pano isn't working. So typically for an FMX on a new patient, they do four bite wings, two PAs, and then a pano. Pano is not working. Sorry, Natalie, you're gonna have to take FMXs on everybody today. We're already running like 30, 35 minutes late. Yeah, usually by now, X-rays are done. I've gone over the health history. Their pre-rinse is done. Their blood pressure is done. Their, uh, hopefully I'm perio charting and maybe even starting a cleaning, you know, and she pops out like this huge, it was, uh, it looked like Invisalign. So it was like a clear retainer with teeth in it. And I'm going, what is that? You know, so, so it turns out she has implants that have not been finished. She didn't like the dentist that put them in. So she's running around with three implants up there that have nothing on them. So she's got blank gums. So she wears this clear retainer. So she looks like she has teeth, poor thing. And I, it needed cleaning, but I was not about to clean it because I don't know if that is gonna handle the ultrasonic. Um, it probably could have, but I didn't really have time to ask. So I was like, you know what? We're just gonna set this over here. So I take her x-rays and I'm just looking at the clock the whole time going, I'm so behind, this is so crazy. And then I get to do this all again in like another 30 minutes. So I sit down, I got her cleaning done. I did her perio charting, all that stuff. And the dentist comes in to do the exam and he's kind of an in and out guy. Like he's, he's there, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the office, let's look at everything. Okay, I'm done. And she wouldn't quit talking. <laughs> so especially about those implants. And she had legitimate questions and he stayed to answer them, which was good. I really appreciated that. But at the same time, I'm going, Mah! so I'm running over at this point and I sat the next new patient down, I think at least 20 minutes late. And then same thing happens again, of course. So with him, he was younger. They're like, oh, it'll be easier because he's younger. Nope, he actually had way more tartar than the lady did. And it wasn't quite scaling and replaning on him, so we did like a full mouth debridement on him. And, you know, it's like, I gotta do all those x-rays all over again. It was a lot. So then I'm now sitting down my third patient. And the third patient, I can't remember anything super specific other than I was running, I was, I was think I was running about 30 minutes late at this point. And I'm like, well, I don't get a lunch. <laughs> and I just hate, like it irks me to run late at work. My family will tell you I don't mind running late in normal life, which I apologize family for. I'm trying to get better. But like at work, I want to be on time, if not early. And I'm just, and it's such a high energy office. Like there's so much going on. It's super intense there. It's a nice office. I love temping there, but it's just, gives you high blood pressure, honestly. So the, yeah, I get through the next one. I'm already 30 minutes into my lunch break. I get everything cleaned up. Now I have to set up for this new procedure I have never done before. And I was asking the dentist, like, okay, how do, how do you do this? And he goes, well, you're gonna get them numb. First problem, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then, you, well, you put them on nitrous, you get them numb. I have never used their nitrous machine. <laughs> Uh, and then he's gonna come in and what a flap, gingival flap surgery is, if you don't know, um, you take a scalpel and you're gonna cut along the gums. And then you slice it down and then you pull it all back. So you can see roots of teeth and bone. And then you get in there and you clean like crazy. And then the doctor comes back in and they stitch those gums back together and you pray it heals, <laughs> okay? So I have not given injections in a long time. I used to be very good at it. I did one a couple weeks ago and I missed and the patient didn't get numb and the doctor had to come in and give a second one, which is embarrassing. Because again, I used to be able to give these during earthquakes and they were perfect. 
So, but I'm out of practice. My one doctor wouldn't let me do it. And then my most recent doctor was way better at it than I was, especially after I hadn't done it for six years. Uh, he was super gentle, so he would come in and get patients done for me. And most of the time, if I was doing a basic scaling and replanning, most patients don't need to be completely numb. You are fine with aura kicks, cetacane, you know, something where it's like a topical, it's around the teeth, it's not gonna get like anything but the gums numb. Most patients are perfectly fine with that. No real residual pain afterwards. Awesome. Some patients are super sensitive and for them you really need to do something a little more and for those patients I'd have the doctor come in. Well this guy is running three chairs of his own plus we got three hygienists going. He's way too busy to come in and anesthetize for me. <sighs> so I see the patient. He has to fill out uh, obviously you know paperwork saying he's okay doing the procedure and I take his blood pressure and a pulse because we were gonna be doing nitrous. And I set him up with the nitrous. And again, long time since I've done nitrous, but I remembered, did it, everything correctly. He was, you know, comfortable at about 35% nitrous and probably should have taken him a little higher <laughs> when you hear the rest of the story. But for then it was fine. So I laid him back and I start getting him numb. So I placed topical. And during my lunch break, which I didn't get, I got like five minutes of actual like <sighs> time. Uh, I was looking at, like I was refreshing on nitrous, I was refreshing on the injections uh, and just looking at like gingival flap surgery. And I'm using a piezo, which I've used cavitrons mostly, most of my career. So I'm most familiar and most comfortable with them. The piezo for a patient who has severe calculus that is very tenacious is fantastic just gonna say like they both kind of have their place but if this is a procedure I'm already not familiar with using an instrument that I'm not super comfortable with is also kind of nerve-wracking but that's again ahead of the story so I lean him back and I start giving his injections and I give him the whole hey if you're feeling this put your hand up and then when you don't feel anymore put your hand down yeah he felt it like the whole time so I don't know if my technique just sucked which I'm sure it did uh, or like if he was just super sensitive, which he seemed to be. Uh, anyway, at one point he told me I was going to hell and that's not comforting. Although, you know what? If I was causing that much pain in somebody's mouth, I'd probably be, or having that much pain caused in my mouth, I'd be probably thinking the same thing. Not really, but I don't, I don't tend to think those things about people. <laughs> but you know, I would be not super happy. So he was kind of, nervous about like everything. Like I asked him at the beginning, do you have any questions about what we're doing today? Do you understand the procedure? And I kind of went over it with him, but as I leaned him back and started giving him injections, he was like, time out. What exactly are we doing today? And I was like, well, we're gonna do a deep cleaning on, you know, I had to re-explain it to him. And he was like, okay, yeah, just, just so I know. And I'm like, All right, so he wasn't really, I don't think he truly understood what we were doing. Uh, anyway, so I, I put his IA injection in, which is the nerve that gets your whole lower jaw numb, and then your tongue half numb, and the inside of the floor of your mouth numb. If you do it right, like it should get like all these areas numb. Okay, and I so missed it. Like, and I gave him two carps, and I st he still was not completely numb. like it was decent on the tongue. The tongue was numb. I got the lingual nerve. I didn't really get the IA and I definitely didn't get the buckle. And so he was, he was kind of saying he was numb, but if I took a sharp instrument, it went ding, 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 ding. Does that feel any different this side versus this side? He was like, no, crap. <laughs> and then, so then I did his uppers and I did not do the one right back here. The insides are the greater palatine, which is back in here because they're so painful and I didn't know if the doctor was gonna be like doing the same thing there or not because again we hadn't really had time to sit down and talk about okay how much tissue are you removing <sighs> anyway so doctor comes in I've been I've, I'm like what in an hour I think into this guy's appointment already and he's just kind of numb and he's got the nitrous on and I'm just going I've got an hour left so the doctor comes in the guy's definitely not numb enough so the doctor re-injects him and then starts slicing and he, oh, 
no, I take it back. So the doctor grabs the scalpel and promptly cuts himself. Big old gash in his finger. So he doesn't say a whole lot, but I see blood like on the glove and he hasn't touched this guy yet. I'm just like, what? So he pulls his glove off, goes like this, stands up and walks out. And I was like, crumb. <laughs> so, so he goes out and he, oh, oh. And when the doctor was getting him numb, he told the doctor the doctor was going to hell too. So it wasn't just me. It did actually make me feel better. Uh, anyway, so the doctor comes back. He's all wrapped up now. He's got two gloves on and he's like, just slight. <laughs> And you can tell he's done this quite a bit because he's very comfortable with it. But he flaps him down. He grabs what's called an isolite, which is this big plastic thing that we're using these days to uh, suction with. And he, like that. And it sits in and it kind of pushes the tongue back and it just suctions everything up. Uh, but it looks like quite a mouthful. Like I haven't tried one in my own mouth yet, but they're kind of crazy. Uh, and the guy's bleeding like a stuck pig. Like, it's so crazy. And the doctor's like throwing stuff around. And so now there's blood like on the counter. And I don't even know. Uh, so I said, he's like, okay, he should be good to go. And he stands up and walks out. He told me the teeth that he'd opened. And then he shows me like how to retract. He's like, you take this tool and you pull the tissue back. And then you can get in there and, you know, and then you're going to, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So my poor little heart's doing this. And I get in there, I sit down, I'm a fully gloved, you know, I got all my stuff on and I just look at this guy's mouth and there's so much blood. I'm like, oh, oh, I forgot. There's one more thing. So I look at the guy's health history before I start and I was really hoping to get out of this, this procedure because I'd asked and nobody would trade with me because uh, everybody had patients that will only see them or, uh-uh, I did one of those before. There's no way I'm doing one of those, so yay. Uh, and, but he'd had a heart attack in May and I went, okay, well, we have a six month rule that if you've had any kind of heart attack or stroke, like you're not seen, especially for this kind of procedure before six months. Okay. That's just kind of a rule of thumb. And I went to the doctor and I said, could we excuse him? Because and he goes, no, like, what are we, what, what what's another month going to do? I mean, come on. I was like, oh. Okay, I guess I am working on him. Huh. So, you know, went back. Anyway, uh, so now I'm working on him and I grab my piezo and I'm in there and I'm just going to town, I guess is really the best way of putting it. Um, but I'm having the hardest time like visualizing the area because you got to haul it back, but you also need a mirror. And then, you know, so you're supposed to be able to do direct visualization, right? But it wasn't sliced to the point where you really could just like flap it, you know, where it just like flies open. Uh, so I was just, I was having to like kind of tug and pull a little bit to see what I was doing and then really work. I have no idea if I got everything off. I was feeling around with the Explorer. I, I felt like I did. I felt like maybe there was stuff there in certain areas. I, I don't even know. Like it was, I was not comfortable with the procedure. I didn't feel like my skills were anywhere near adequate for this. Um, I thought that, you know, patients deserve better, honestly, than throwing this at a temp who's never done one before. But whatever, the doctor was like, I'm confident in your abilities. And I'm like, well, good, glad you are, because I ain't. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, so, and again, blood everywhere. Like, I've never seen anybody bleed this badly before. And thankfully, he was clotting, but the clots are also an issue. So that isolite clogs up with the clots and then I can't see anything. So I'm having to use the other suctions as well. So eventually I grabbed their, what is it? The new, no, uh, the new bird. Was it new bird or I don't know. They had one of those, like, I can't think of it right now, but it's a mirror plus a high speed suction. So I used that and I was suctioning like crazy trying, you know, the guy's comfortable. Yay. But no. anyway, so I finally finished. More, more, more like I ran out of time, honestly. I truly ran out of time. And I, he still needs to get stitched up. He needs post-op instructions. He needs a rinse. He, you know, there's stuff to do. And I'm looking at the clock going, I'm done. Like I have to, I have to be done. My next patient's here and I'm going to sit them super late again. So like I have not had a lunch. I haven't had a water break 
I think I had this much water the entire day. I had, had those, those mini Dixie cups, you know? <laughs> That's all the water I got. Got no food, got no water. Run and grab the doctor. He comes, he puts a bunch of stitches in the guy. The creepy thing about that whole procedure was the tissue, because it's losing so much blood, because of the way it's uh, not attached, it turns kind of this gray color and it looks dead. And you're really hoping it's gonna pink back up, like when the doctor puts the two pieces back together. <laughs> and it looked like fine. I was there last week. The doctor said the guy had been in, he's been sensitive to cold, but other than that, everything looked like it was healing nicely. Yay, I guess. So in the end, I learned a new skill. So, oh yeah, and I have to take the guy off nitrous. So now I gotta get the guy off nitrous, let him sit on oxygen for at least five minutes. Ah, it was crazy. Like my heart rate's up, just telling you guys about all this. Okay, so then you gotta clean the room up. Um, and cleaning the room up is also rather intense because there's blood on the counters. When we took the isolite out, it pulled a two inch clot maybe three, yeah, two to three inches out of this guy's head. And it, like the suction wasn't strong enough to keep it on the isolite when the doctor put the isolite back in the holder. So this big old blood clot just goes onto the floor. I hope you heard that. <laughs> and I'm going, Meh! so now it looks like I have just had open heart surgery in my room. So I'm gonna clean that up sanitize, sterilize, you know, the, the nitrous machines got blood on it. The lights got blood on it from the doctor. That wasn't from me. Um, I ended up changing my gloves, I think three times during that procedure because I would get so much blood on my hands that I was smearing it onto the guy's face. So he looked like a cannibal. Like, <laughs> it was so bad, you guys. Ah, okay, so I finished him up. I got the whole place cleaned up. I got him out the door. I sit the next one down. And I was super really proud of myself because this office is a burst office, which as you guys know, I am super into burst. I am one of their ambassadors. I'm actually one of their office specialists now, which is super fun. And I'm actually their rep for this office, which was fun. So they decided to sell it in bulk and they have you know brushes on site. And this lady really needed an electric toothbrush. And she had not got, they had others, but she hadn't gotten one because she was, uh, they were too expensive of what she said. And then she was on a period of maintenance, so she's coming in every three months and she wanted to come in every four months. And I told her, you know what, if you wanna come in every four months, you buy this toothbrush today and you can come in every four months. And she goes, done. So I sold the rose gold toothbrush for them. They were super happy. I got a win for the day, yay! <laughs> and then the last two patients, I don't ever remember. It was such a blur at that point. Um, I had the entire day's charts to do. It took me an hour to do charts that evening because with the two new patients and then the gingival flap, um, it was just a lot more charting than I'm used to. Like the new patients, not so much, but like the gingival flap, because you have to talk about the nitrous and how you titrated it. And then you have to talk about like what they acted like after it was done. And you have to talk about, you know, the stitches and what was used. And you have to talk about the anesthesia and what was used and how much. And it's just, it's writing those kinds of notes is a lot of work. And I'm usually like, thankfully, thank you, mom. I'm a very fast typist because of my mother. And I, that saved me a lot, but it still took me an hour to get all those done. <laughs> so I got it done. I was an hour late coming home. It's pitch black because it's winter now. And I was so exhausted. I went to bed, ate, went to bed, and my heart rate was high for about, I would say an hour, hour and a half where I couldn't sleep. I don't do caffeine. Like I do not drink coffee. I don't do green tea. I drink nothing with caffeine in it. I felt like I must, I, I felt like I must've been on caffeine. Like it was, I was, it was so intense. I could not calm down. Uh, and then the next week, last week, I go back in and I look at my schedule and I have this same procedure on another guy. And I went, you've, you've gotta be kidding me. So I went to the doctor, I was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me. I ended up doing it. It went much better. My injections were way better. Uh, I didn't have to do nitrous, which helped a lot because that took up a lot of time the first time around. 
and you know it just it, and he was really nice about it he'd already had one side done so he knew what to expect he was super nice about it uh and yeah but uh it was a lot guys it was a lot like it was a lot of blood anyway this is becoming a very long video so i apologize but that was i just couldn't it looked like open heart surgery it really did like if i wanted to be a surgeon and have blood to my elbows i would have become a surgeon but i didn't and i'm losing my light and i'm also losing my it looks bad here so anyway that was my story so hope you guys have an awesome week uh somebody asked me a really great question about dental hygiene and going on and getting masters or becoming like a uh, instructor i'm gonna do some research into that because that is very interesting i've never found it interesting for myself personally but that is a great idea for a video so look for that coming up in the future and i will see you guys next week like and subscribe comment below have you done a gingival flap surgery what was your first one like i hope it went better than mine again glad nobody died i was told i was gonna go to hell but there are worse things i suppose i mean he could have bled out <laughs> i didn't need to go grab any o negative <laughs> take care guys we'll see you next time